Go ahead. Welcome to the Padawan Podcast. I'm Steve, alongside co-host Oliver, a.k.a. the Padawans. And today we have our review of Episode 6, Chapter 6 of The Mandalorian, The Prisoner, coming in hot. Welcome, everybody, to our Episode 6 review awesome episode there's a lot of action a lot to talk about yeah. Ollie, what's your reaction to it yeah so uh this was probably I, I i really liked this one um i think we are getting to the point where i i think i'm just accepting that there's no gigantic overall storyline that we're always working towards just kind of episodic um and this one was this one was just a lot of fun you know what i mean yeah. uh less I would say less like nostalgia and, and Lori, you know what I mean? Kind of based. Um, but I think this was just a fun episode. Like people, I think this is a great episode for people who are just loosely star Wars fans. You know what I mean? Who enjoy it, but don't yeah. need the books and the comics and every crazy thing because all within this episode, yeah, it was like a heist. There was like horror moments when the Mandalorians hunting people down. Oh my God. Um, it, yeah. There was good comedy <laughs> Uh, it was just, I think it was fun. It, um, it, it kind of reminds me of, of this is going to sound weird, but it reminds me of solo in the fact that it was fun and just like, it didn't need to be more than it was. Does that make sense? You know what, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, you know what, you, you know, what's funny. I watched solo right after I watched episode six. Did you? Yeah. I, Does we it give you the Netflix. same kind of like solo, I think just suffered from like like the whole last Jedi backlash and stuff like that. But solo is kind of more like what star Wars was originally just like a fun, you know what I mean? Like, and, and this is also, I think this episode just yeah. demonstrates why, and people have said it, that solo would have been so much better off as a Disney plus series. Like though, like Whoa. I think the solo movie would have been a great season on Disney. Yeah, plus. I, you would have gotten a little yeah. more, you know what I mean? But I think it would have been more fun. Like, I, I think it would have fit better as, a, I and I that. like Solo, but I think it would have been better as a TV show. But, so, I don't want to get too yeah, far down I, that rabbit hole. I, th that's what this episode did for me. I had a ton of fun. I was engaged the entire time, and, uh, and, and I really enjoyed it. And, and the only downside, which I'm starting to get over, like we've talked about, is, I, yeah. like we said in the predictions after episode five, I'm, like, waiting for the big bad and the big story to come. And I don't, maybe that's just not, it's, it, like what I'm saying is it's always tough to criticize something for like, they never said it was going to be game of Thrones, right? They never said they were going to be 50 minute episodes. These are all things right. we wanted. So you can always critique it. I'm just saying it. I don't think it's fair to bash something based on expectations when it's good. It's just not exactly what you wanted. So I'm starting to get the feel that these, that these episodes are fun. Go ahead. Uh, Go ahead. I, well, I mean, Oh, I, well, I wouldn't, necessarily say that because you have people that are bashing the other movies right i mean uh another I'm not topic saying you can't bash the movies you can right you can bash whatever you want i'm just saying i think sometimes i think the difference for me is there's good critiques which are fine like you can have opinions and stuff like that but then i think it crosses a line of just and you're again you're allowed to do it if you feel like yeah. bashing you can bash i'm just saying you lose me in terms of like listening to your points when yeah. it's stuff that just like, again, we can get into it on the full podcast about other things. Cause I think this is a bigger picture thing, but I just yep. think we have to be careful with our expectations because we're, look, we're not writing the Mandalorian and I'm having fun with it. So that's what I'm saying. I'm getting over a little bit of my, it's not exactly what I thought it was going to be, right? but I'm not going to let that stop me from having fun because what they're trying to do, they're doing really well. Did you know you what I mean? Does that make it? sense? Did you go into it thinking it was Game of Thrones? Uh, I would base it close. And, and what I mean by Game of Thrones is I, I thought it was going to be like a movie that they broke down into TV shows. So I thought there was going to be one giant plot, right? That every oh. episode was going to work towards. And that was going to yes. be kind of what it was. And that's not what it is. And so I, all I'm saying is I don't want it bummed me out a little bit, but then I was like, why am I bummed out? That's unfair. Like that doesn't mean the show's bad. You know what I mean? Like right. that's I mean, not what they're trying to do. They didn't say they were going to do that. So I feel like it's unfair to, to a certain extent to bash something 
They didn't, you know what I'm saying? Like, they didn't say it was going to be a certain way and then not deliver. Then I think it's fair to bash, right? If they were like, every episode is going to be an hour long and it's only 20 minutes, then it's fair to say you said that. Is there a lot of people that are saying that it should have been like Game of Thrones? I mean, that's, I didn't, I didn't go into this thinking that at all. Well, I'm using, I just explained, I don't, I didn't think it was going to be Game of Thrones. I just thought it was going to be a longer plot. I thought the episodes were going to be longer. I mean, a friend of ours that I talked to, like the first criticism was, oh, the, the episodes are short, which, which is like, that's a fine criticism of what, but, but you know what I'm saying? They didn't come out and say it was they going to be an short. hour. Right. It just, they feel short. So that I'm just saying the criticism should end there. You, you feel like they should be longer, but you have to know that that criticism comes from you assuming that they were going to be longer. It doesn't mean that short is bad. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I, I see what you're saying. I just, just for me, I'm saying I'm, I'm enjoying it more now that I've released the expectation of it, having this overall plot. That's going to be this huge ending at the end of the season. I'm enjoying it now because I, I realize it's episodic like, and that's what they want. They obviously wanted to do. So I'm, I'm, I'm digging it. more. That's all I'm saying. It depends. I guess it depends. I, it, I'm still not, um, so basically, in my head, this is what it sounds like to me is that you're saying it's going to be episodic, like you're saying. You're going to, there's no overall plot line per se. I mean, we have one right now that's the, you know, everyone's kind of at going after Baby Yodi and he's trying to, you know, find somewhere safe where, you know, they can hide. But, right. Um, I, I, I'm saying I, I, could, I'm... I could see how people were expecting like you were saying that it should be a movie cut into pieces right um i've heard both sides i think that's a better that's what i thought going in i guess that's a better description than game of thrones i thought it was going to be a movie yeah that was cut into eight episodes and all i'm saying yeah, for better I mean, or for worse i'm not saying like it i'm i'm just saying that's what i was expecting and so for a little while i was bummed out because but then i realized like that's just not what it is and I, I personally have started to enjoy it more once I release that expectation. So I'm not saying you had that expectation. I'm not saying anybody needs to do that. I'm just saying me personally, I've enjoyed it this episode because I kind of realized this is what it is. It's episodic. It's not a movie that they cut into pieces. It's a TV show that they're doing each week as an episode. There, Like you said, there is the general overarching plot. Like there isn't anything. You know what I mean? But it's not it's just not the movie cut into pieces. I think that's the best way to explain it. So for me, did, I'm enjoying it more with that, like that. What did someone say to you on Twitter? Jeez. Sounds no, like I haven't offended. even read this. <laughs> I'm, I'm only no, it has, it, yeah, it actually has nothing to do. There's nobody that said anything to me or said this that I've read. I'm, I'm saying from my own point of view, why I'm enjoying it more and what this episode kind of brought to light. I thought for me, again, for me, my opinion, I thought I, I've been a little bit off put because I thought it was going to be this big movie. You know what I mean? Um, and I thought episode four and five were kind of these like, Oh, we're just like, kind of like, we're just stalling for like filler episodes. Right. But it turns out, now to me like I, th- I think that that's just that's what the show is so you're gonna get some you know what i mean and and i'm okay with that so, all i'm saying is i've enjoyed it more now that i've kind of dropped that expectation yeah so i i think i have i think my expectations are a little bit different than yours then mm-hmm. because i didn't go into it thinking it was going to be a tv like like a movie like say like game of thrones or something that would be cut into pieces yeah. so i i kind of didn't have that expectation going into it that said these type of shows lose me real fast. Gotcha. Um, and the reason for that is so like there's shows like agents of shield that, I mean, that was one of the ones I referenced in the last episode, uh, arrow flash, all those shows, like the, the parts that I like of that show is when the plot is so thick. So like the last three like, episodes or yeah, no, no, no. I mean, Arrow actually for the first couple seasons didn't even, I mean like, yeah, they had a couple filler episodes, but like it all tied into the story Mm -hmm. and I like the storytelling aspect. And that's kind of what I, that's what I was expecting from this because I thought this is a TV show. It's going to provide all this new lore. There's going to be all this stuff on Mandalorians. It's going to tell a story. And if it's episodic, well, that's great. 
for so long because you're going to lose me. Cause then I'm going to be like, all right, it's the same thing. They go on, you know, they go to a different planet. They, they see all this stuff. Yeah, it's cool. And then it's going to be like, okay, what do they do next? I think there's going to be more of a plot thread coming. I mean, obviously you saw that at the end of episode five, Yeah, that something's going to be, ha- something's going to happen. And I, I think there will be something that'll happen. I just, as a show, if it's just going to be constant, I don't want to say filler, but if it's going to be like, there's no overarching plot to it, or like, there's no, like, it, it ha- I don't know. It's going to lose me if it's going to be kind of like the way it is, I guess, in the sense, because it's just, it's, it's just going to be the same stuff over and over and over again. And that, that's kind of where my criticism would go. If we're going to go down that road, that said, I thought episode six, I mean, I haven't even mentioned my reaction to it. I'm just saying from an expectations level, yeah. I really hope that they bring a little bit more plot. Like, and I know it's season one, so you can't exactly expect that. I'm expecting that, uh, you know, they've mentioned in episode seven that watched that before Rise of Skywalker. That's what, uh, what's his face? Uh, John, uh, for, uh, I always screw up saying his name, for Ray, uh, how do you Favreau? say it? Favreau. Um, he mentioned that uh, recently, and I think it was an interview, actually. So that just tells me right there that the plot is going to thicken a little bit, and there's going to be something that's going to tie to Rise of Skywalker, I hope. Um, but, yeah, if it was just that... So, like, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., another show, those episodes, a lot of them were filler. And, yeah, there was a little bit like, oh, this is kind of tied to the plot, like, a little bit. Yeah. I got lost after like two seasons. I was like, all right, I'm bored. Like, this is the same stuff over and over and over again. It's not changing. Yeah. It's the Marvel universe. There's all these cool powers and stuff, but Mm -hmm. like, there's only so much that's going to keep me entertained. How many uh, episodes were in agents of shield in like a season? Oh God. There was, I think it was like 20 something. Yeah. I think that's, that's the only difference that we're going to find. Cause arrow had a ton too. Cause I watched arrow a decent amount. Yeah. There's only going to be eight episodes. You know what I mean? So right. I, hopefully it, it doesn't it, lose you. Yeah. Yeah. Especially yeah, if the last I, two episodes are what you're talking about. Like a lot yeah, of plot comes in all of a sudden it doesn't seem that bad. Just like in the middle. From, yeah. Yeah. From my side, I, I've had a few friends that have said like, they really like the show. They feel it's too short. Yep. which I think is a good criticism because it does feel like it's a little bit short. Like it needs to be a little bit longer. I I'll agree with that. But then a lot of them have said, it feels like it's just the, the same stuff over and over again. Yeah. And I know it's new. Don't get me wrong. Like we're seeing new stuff every episode, but no, the last three episodes have basically all been the same thing. Yeah. With very little to like the overarching plot, which is they're going, trying to, get after baby Yodi and well, try so, to get him. And, yeah. They've you know. all been totally different, but the overarching plot hasn't moved at all. Right. And that's, that, yeah. and I think yeah. that's what everyone's kind of waiting for because it, that was kind of like when episode three happened, it left on like kind of that cliffhanger of like, Oh shit, what's going to happen after this? So right. I can definitely see how like, so like if the next episode is kind of the same thing, I could start to see people how people will be a little bit more critical because then they'll be like, all right, are we going to keep doing right the same type of episode and it, for me personally i like shows like daredevil for instance there was no filler it was all related to the plot the plot was thick there's all these twists and turns but like the filler ish stuff still tied to the plot like the overarching theme mm-hmm. and that's that's kind of what i was hoping for with mandalorian when i was like oh they're gonna be streaming it so that means there's gonna be more depth there's gonna be more right, right i right. hope there's more of that and there really hasn't been much of that yet with that said season one you gotta get people entertained you gotta get people like their right. uh <clears throat> palettes wet so i think i, the big I can thing, see both sides i think the big thing too which is exactly what you're saying but seeing how we're doing these individually, you know what I mean? Every episode we we do a review. I could very well see all these questions being answered because again, like you're talking about daredevil and you're talking about it after you've seen the first season, right? Top five best shows I've ever watched. Right. But what I'm saying is if you had done, and there's no way to to know, and and I'm not saying it, it was bad. I'm just saying if you had done an episodic review, after every episode of Daredevil came out, there may have been a few at the time that you were like, I don't know that this deals with the overall plot. 
just like if we get to the next two episodes and there's this bigger plot point, right? And it brings in Cara Dune and it brings yeah. in the character at the end of episode five that goes over to Fennec Shan's body, right? Yeah, well, and that's then, the other thing. Right, that, so like all of a sudden now about. those now those episodes mean more than they do on their own right now, you know? Right. So I, but, and, and I know that I'm you're leaving for. that open. Yeah, exactly. And it, I mean, if that doesn't happen, like say everything that just happened, like so Cara Dune, for instance, say she never comes back. Right. I actually would probably be a little bit, be a little bit pissed because then I would yeah, be I'd like, be bummed, okay, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Like why did you introduce this? Like, yep. Is the whole point of the show, like just cameos? Like, right. No, a hundred percent. And we haven't even talked, we haven't even talked about episode six, like what we saw. So like in terms of who was in it, but like, if it was, if, if it's like that, I, I'm, I mean, yeah. then I'm going to be a little bit more critical because then I'm going to be like, okay, well then <laughs> Yeah, it's cool. It's and I level, think, but like, I want. And I, I think we've mentioned plot. it. I think we've mentioned it a couple times. We are doing these interview. We are doing these um, breakdowns at the end of each episode. A lot of our criticisms can be completely wiped out at the end of the season because they're open ended yeah, I mean, criticisms. Five, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yep. At the end of episode five, we were we were starting to get a little bit critical, and then episode six happened, and so. Right. My overall reaction. Yeah. I really liked the the episode. I mean, there was there was a couple of Easter eggs in there. A couple of, uh, I mean, do you mind if I uh, talk about the actors a little bit? Yeah. Well, let's get into uh, that after. So, yeah. Does that your total reaction? I mean, you. Yeah. Yeah. I so like one of my biggest things. Okay. So you see in this episode, Bill Burr. Yep. Awesome. My favorite comedian. I never thought I would see him in Star Wars. I mean, I obviously knew he would be in the show yeah. because they cast him, but like. His character, um, the only thing that I've heard from my friends that they didn't really like was his accent, which is interesting. It's an interesting criticism yeah. for, like, Star Wars because Star Wars is just the – who cares about the accents? I mean, I get it. Yep. I mean, you know, you have British and you have – like, whatever. So that was an interesting criticism, but his character was awesome. Like, he played it – like, he played it great. I thought his character was – I want to get to know more of his – or the that group in a sense and then mark boone jr who's from sons of anarchy which yeah. is also one of my favorite shows and he's in a bunch of he's other great. stuff too and he was i thought he played the part well and yeah um you know it, it was nice to see those two actors and kind of in the same i wouldn't picture them all in the same group and then you got you know the mandalorian i mean pedro pascali he's not um like those three actors in a room together, you would not pick. I, I can't picture that. Like that's just there's three completely different backgrounds, three completely different like acting careers and co uh, comedy and stuff, and they're all in the same cast. That's really cool. So, um, yeah. Overall, I thought episode six was was a lot of fun. There was a and I liked the the flashing light scene that reminded me of uh, Batman. I mean, that was like oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. straight out of Dark Knight. Like just <laughs> it was like horror uh, for a second there. Yeah, but like uh, I saw a GIF on Twitter, and it was like someone doing the uh, having Batman instead of Mandalorian oh, sneak uh, up going down the <laughs> down the hallway to it Bill Burr. Like so that, that was funny. Yeah, I knew yeah that so well. yeah, so it was re it was really cool. I really enjoyed it. Nice. Um, so you want to uh, jump into uh, things people might have missed, or just notes on the on the episode? Yeah, yeah. I mean, what uh, what things do you think that uh, most viewers would have missed in the episode. I'll let you lead off. Yeah, so there there are a few like uh, deeper ones. The uh, New Republic guy um, on the ship. Yep. Uh, he's actually the voice of um, Anakin Skywalker from the Clone Wars. So that's pretty cool. Wait, really? Yep. Yep. Matt Lantern. Um, oh shit! I did not know that. Yeah. Wow. So that was that was cool. We're gonna. I feel like Wait, we're gonna get a lot Matt of those Lantern. with Filo with Filoni involved. Yeah, he he's been he's been an actor in other things okay. too, but that just from the Star Wars universe, he's the voice of Anakin Skywalker. I thought you were talking those. about Zero. That's why I was like, for no, some reason, no, no. I was looking at Zero, and I was like, wait a second. No, okay. uh, I think he's a British comedian, played the voice of Zero. Uh, Richard. Yeah. Ayed. Yeah, I don't know how to pronounce his last name, but he's he's funny. He's like super dry. Um, he does like a travel show too. So he's, he's like Mitch Hepburn. Yeah, well, maybe not that dry. I don't know anybody's that dry. But uh, God, God damn it, damn it. Yeah, but he's uh, he he did good. Zero zero was well played. I thought all of them fit. Um. Uh. So yeah. So so Matt Lanter. Sorry, I'll get back to um, my other criticisms later. Uh, 
you know, we had some some decent species. Like, I mean, there weren't a ton, but they were cool. You know, we had uh, yep. Twi'leks, uh, which were two of them. Both had purple skin. Um, they were they weird. Were, they were kind of a weird species, huh? Like that. That they uh, had like more vampire teeth kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and then you had uh, the Deveronian, which I think we've seen before in. Um, in the uh, on our vala seven he's one of the guys holding them up but he's not red which we know from the clone wars they're not all red but this guy was kind of the no. classic deveronian that looked very much like the guy from yeah. the cantina in a new hope um so he was fun i it thought was he was just satan. like a big frankenstein it was satan yeah <laughs> it was satan's <laughs> mutant like, fire or so whatever yeah but yeah. uh he was cool um and then one of the prisoners uh had the, the four armed guy who was actually the same species i think ardinian um from uh, in, the uh, solo pilot and i think john favreau actually plays him in solo uh rio oh, durant okay. yeah that's what i was about to say is like that that was from solo yeah yeah and then the last like little thing this this was kind of deep uh the um the ship at the end the gunship that uh yep. i always just call him bobby but ran um calls up that was a model very similar probably the same model just just upgraded in different ways as grievous's ship from the clone wars grievous's little personal gunship that he flies around which was pretty grievous cool because bitch yeah but that ship is that <laughs> ship's legit that was pretty cool and then like i think you had i don't know i don't know you didn't mention it earlier that the x-wing pilots are all the direct are some of the directors from the show yeah they're all uh so one of them is uh deborah chow yeah uh, uh and then Dave Filoni was the first one that you see. He's, uh, I guess he's credited as uh, Trapper Wolf. And yeah, then, he's a big wolf guy. Yep, yep. The yeah. leader. Whatever, and, then, yeah. and then Rick, Rick. Famuyewa, yeah, who did. Yeah. Uh, Is that how you say it? Is that how you say know. his That's last name? How, it looks like it, yeah. Um, Jib Dodger. That's an interesting <laughs> Jib. Yeah. And he was the one that directed this episode. So I thought that was cool. Yeah. I like those little things because those, those guys don't 100% matter canon wise and and you well, may so see them show up like their name get dropped in a comic which is also fun sometimes like it'll be like some comic in like a year you'll see an, a random x-wing pilot and it'll yeah. be like oh trapper wolf and you're like oh that's Dave Filoni. and i think they well, do a good job with that stuff it's like episode five there was uh like i was saying like the spaceport operator the uh right. stephen bloom the same uh, voice bloom. or whatever he was, yeah. Uh, yeah he was uh the voice of uh zeb and like I know him from other stuff. So I was like, Oh, that's cool. Like that, that's a little bit of a cameo. I mean, yeah. Yeah. I, I thought, it, yeah, I thought it was that. good. And there were some, there were a bunch of like little, uh, uh, Canon references, uh, which I thought were fun. Most were Bill Burr. Funny enough. Um, he, he yeah. was the Imperial sharpshooter and Mando goes, that doesn't say, yeah, that doesn't that say much. much. And like, I'm not a stormtrooper <laughs> wise ass, which was funny. And then he does the, um, the, uh, Gungan impression, with the you yep. don't know what your helmet or whatever and then he calls the <laughs> razor crest like a canto bite slot machine so just just a good job just dropping you know what i mean just like he, little just uh, ma making the the continuity of the universe you know what i mean and i think they've yeah. done a good job in the show it doesn't it's a throwaway line like we've talked about a million times that i think the movies are so afraid that people won't get like 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 oh forbid uh bill burr from saying a canto bite slot machine what if someone doesn't get it and it completely takes them out of the movie it's like if you didn't get it it didn't mean anything to you like you wouldn't right. even notice it and i think that's what mandalorian's doing a better job at than the sequel trilogy in my opinion and what's uh, what's ironic too is that uh bill burr uh has no idea and, uh, <laughs> well no 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 not even that he has well, one he does, he has no, he probably and I think I bet you he appreciates it a lot more now. But secondly, uh, he was very, actually very critical of Star. Actually, the new trilogy. So it was kind of interesting that yeah. he went from being so critical to being like, "Oh yeah, you're gonna be cast him." So maybe it's just like he was just joking with people, just like fucking with them, like, "Oh yeah, I you know I hate Star Wars. A bunch of little you know, yeah. Oh wow, I mean, the galaxy yeah. far, far away." <laughs> But like, I think so I, I think that's I think a broader funny. picture too that's really cool is that Star Wars is getting so big now that there are there are plenty of people now who could be obsessed with some part of Star Wars and as much as yeah. I, I try to stay positive with it but I'm saying there's a there's getting to the point where there could be someone who loves the novels and hates the movies but still loves Star Wars because they're into the novels you know what I mean and Bill there's Burr could a represent a person division. that there's going to be a ton of people I'm telling you that are that really dig the Mandalorian and like hate all the movies I you think know what overall, I mean? like it, it seems like uh, with our friends and stuff, I I mean, even just going to the gym and everything, like yeah. overall, I think everyone has been very positive, but they're a little bit critical. I mean, with certain things like we've, we've discussed, yeah. but 
And like I we've think, talked yeah. about, it's fine to be critical. It's when you go over the line and like, then just don't watch it. If you hate it yeah. that much, then just don't watch it. Who cares? Yeah. I mean, the uh, the movies are different. There, there's just a whole, that's a whole different fan base. There's a whole, so much more into it. It's a movie. So no, I don't only, think, I don't like think it's different thing. in terms of like that, that concept though. You don't need to like, you can be critical. But like, if you yeah. hate it that much, then just stop watching. Like, yeah. I, like yeah. I, ha- I hate some TV shows too. You know what I do? I don't watch the second season. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? True, I, it, true. You know. Yeah. So, but yeah. So, true. what are the? Did you have more that you noticed? More things that no, probably no, slid that, by? I mean, yours are only mainly thing. the actors and the. Yeah, and I mean, uh, you know, one of the things I, one of the things I found odd in the episode, the the Twelix. There oh was... yeah, and we should mention one of them. Well, they were both yeah. actors and actresses, but the the girl was uh, Osha from Game of Thrones, the the wildling. Yep. Yeah. But Natalie, yeah. So go. Uh, yeah. Tana. Yeah. Sorry. So yeah. So. No, no, no. So she. You weren't a fan. I guess. Of the Twelix. Yeah. yeah. I mm-hmm. I thought it was. I mean. I, maybe it's just kind of because it's like almost like that's only one of the few times we've seen that kind of. I, I don't even know, like tribe. I don't even know what they're called. Like, what would you call that? Like, because there's different kinds of Twi'leks. They're not all the yeah, same. Yeah, I mean, I think, I, I think Twi'leks are a good, I mean, they're all aliens. In the, I think Star Wars does a good job of broadening the species. Like, look at humans. Not a lot of us look the same. But in general, we look the same. You know what I mean? Um, I found but yeah, annoying. they, they look, they looked, especially the, the, the guy. Because some, yeah. some Twi'leks, Twi'lek, however you want to pronounce it. Um, some of them look extremely human with just the two Leku, right? Like, like they don't uh, look any Hera. different. They just have, well, yeah, but she's animated. But yeah, they make yeah, them look very like, yeah. human and just, and then some like Bib Fortuna and Beezer For- Fortuna from uh, Beezer's, the creepy one that I was telling you about from, yeah. from Saw's thing. They have like way more like their heads misshaped. They don't look human at all. You know, so I thought right. the the brother Quinn, I think his name was, he yeah. looked much more like them. Like he had kind of a pronounced forehead. He didn't look as human. Um, he looks like a troll. Yeah, yeah, kind of. And and uh, <laughs> yeah, no, you're not. You're not and, yeah. Kinda. And then uh, I didn't think I didn't even know it was a guy at first. when he came out. I was like, does he have boobs? Like, I don't, <laughs> it, I I was confused and I was like, oh, it's a guy. Okay. Well, and then like, she and the girl. She yep. had more of like a sharpened teeth kind of. So throughout canon and the Clone Wars and stuff like that, there are different types of Twi'leks that look different and act different. They're a little more. She's a little more like animalistic. Like she growls and like. So I only mention that because. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. Like almost feral. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yep. Um, I only mention that because I know you didn't love them. Um, my wife no. didn't didn't love her either the character yeah, she, she thought was she was cr- like a little like, over the top i took it yeah. more as like i think i i think i do this this is why i'm not a movie critic but i take a lot of things at face value so like her character to me is annoying but i think she's supposed to be annoying she's supposed to be over the top that whole crew is supposed to be over the top so it's weird to say yeah. but i feel the same way about her as you guys do i thought she was over the top i just don't see that as a bad character i see that as like what they were trying to make the character she was supposed to be this kind of creepy crazy yeah twilight I mean, so i was fine with it so i didn't notice i didn't get annoyed by her oops sorry i moved my mic i didn't get annoyed by her because i felt like that's exactly what it was supposed to be but i do i i do get the criticism because she was a little she was she's kind of crazy <laughs> i mean it's the first time we've seen that kind of like w- with a twilight it's like they're yeah, well, I mean, in live action, I haven't action, seen them be that annoying. In like, live action, there's really been no Twilight. There's been a couple, not really, not in live action. That's been like a character that's that you've yeah, heard from. But like in the in the novels and in Rebels and all, like they right. don't oh, seem yeah. that like she. No, but she could be a crazy like, human. Humans act like that sometimes. You know what I mean? So I don't I, think I, I don't see it as a. Just, I don't think that's a yeah. Twilight thing. I think that's just that that character's nuts she's off her rock well that, that character is a <laughs> fucking annoying so well, yeah <laughs> that's just what, say I mean, for everybody yeah i don't care yeah like i, I was hoping I thought that crew that. was supposed to be like that so i enjoyed it i thought yeah. i thought she played the role in the crew of like the psychopath well i thought i i thought that that crew seemed like it needed that personality you had the that, muscle okay, dummy okay that you that's had the smart was, ass leader and then you have that's like, what i was looking at 
Yeah. So her, how she was acting. So I think she was trying to pull off like that, like, uh, what I want to say like Anne Hathaway with uh dark Knight rises like that, like kind of like sexy, but, uh, not that I'm saying that she's sexy, but like that, like character or persona kind of Harley sense. Quinn. That's what I thought. Har- the Harley, Harley Quinn. Yeah. yeah. But I thought she went, yeah, like you were saying, little too much. It was a little oh, bit more like, yeah. okay, some I felt like it was that, forced yeah. on some level. Oh, I thought so. That's yeah. why or, I was like, I, th- I thought it was good. But yeah, I, that's what I think. That's a good, that's a good call. That's what she was going for. Whether you think she hit it or not is personal opinion. Yeah. But I think that's what the character was supposed to be, kind of like a Harley Quinn. Yeah. Yep. But um, so what? Uh, <clears throat> did you have any more Easter eggs? Though? No, or anything no that was that was pretty much it unless i'm totally forgetting something that those are the ones yeah. that i had and then um so we're uh we already went over that but where would you rank it real quick oh um probably number number two i would behind say behind three yeah behind okay. episode three like and i was on twitter this week and mm-hmm. just there was something uh someone else tweeted that they really liked episode six, but that it, episode three, when all the Mandalorians come out and they're just like ready for battle and they start fighting and that's stuff. That's still the most badass it, moment. In the that, show. Yeah. That hit like, yep. that's like hair raising, like, Oh yes. Let's go. The baby like, Yoda one was pretty good too, but diff- in different ways, but yeah, no, I agree with different, you. Yep. Yeah. So like, I'd probably say number two or number three for me, because gotcha. that, like I said, episode three, Obviously, that scene, and then Baby Yoda in Episode One, like right. seeing that, and just be mm-hmm. like, "Holy shit!" There's another Yoda. Holy, you know. So yeah. that that's where I would rank. I it. would say in a weird way for me, it's the number one episode, but it didn't have any individual moment that would probably rank in my top four or five moments. You know what I mean? With the Baby yeah. Yoda, with the Mandalorians coming out, with um, even the fight, the ATS, the A, um, the ATSC was really cool. I think that those were cooler moments, but yeah. the episode I just thought was fun. Just a heist with a little bit of horror, good crew with the act. I just, I just thought this episode front to back watching it. I, I was invested the whole time. I, I mean, I'm, we love the show. I, I love the show. So I'm invested the whole time, but this one just kind of had me on edge. And I think it had a little bit to do, which we didn't mention at all. I truly thought where they were going with it as I, I, I obviously know that the baby Yoda is not going to die at this point, but I thought they were going to get him for a little while. Um, uh, I didn't feel like that. I thought they were going to have I kinda like, figured. I, I thought by the end of the episode, he'd probably get him back, but I thought they were going to capture him for a little bit. Um, so that, that kept me, but you can see like, if you thought that, how that kept you on edge in that episode, you know? Um, so it was good. Yeah. yeah. I mean, so uh, let's, let's do predictions. What do you, what do you got? What do you think going for? We got two episodes left, right? Yeah, I think uh, I'm going to hold true to my episode five uh, prediction. I uh, What I said at the end of that, um, I think that the last two episodes, hopefully uh, bring in that plot where, mm-hmm. you know, whoever's chasing him is going to lead to maybe not a big battle at this point. I'm, maybe I'm a little bit downplaying, but episode seven, uh, something's going to be related to the rise of Skywalker in that episode. So I think it's going to be a pretty big episode depending on what's going on. So it might have to do with baby Yoda. I'm going to assume so. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I'm still thinking the same thing. I think there's going to be a big battle in episode eight. That's going to cap off the season. That's still my prediction. Gotcha. What about you? Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty much sticking this to, to the same thing too. I, I think it's going to have something to do with, um, Giancarlo Esposito's character. I think it's going to have kind of the thing that he was the one originally looking for Yodi. Um, he's going to come back on our Vala seven the armor is yeah. going to go down or, or he's going to torch the Mandalorian things. That's where he's going. I think that's where he's going to start to look. And I think there may be some aspect of like, maybe that's how he gets, maybe he does the whole thing where he captures or kills the armor. And yeah. that's how he gets the Mandalorian to come back to him. You know what I mean? To fight. Yeah. And I think again, like I'd said before, there may be something with the bounty hunter guild where like he's pissed because the bounty hunter guild got the baby Yodi, but then stole him back. So even though the other bounty hunters tried to stop the Mandalorian, he's, I think he's going to be equally as pissed at the Mandalorians and the bounty hunter guild for being like, dude, like this was your job. You let one of your dudes, like this is your fault. You know what I mean? Yeah. And yeah. so I think he's, so I think that's where the big battle is going to come between. I think we're going to have some bounty hunters, um, teaming up. Uh, and I think we're going to have a little more Mandalorian action. So 
And I think at the Darn. end of the season, at some point, the Mandalorian is going to get a jetpack. I don't know if it's his for good, but he's going to get to use one. <laughs> That, that's my oh, throw-in that's prediction. Good. Yeah, that's a good prediction. Yeah, I, I, way more detailed than mine. I kind of just, uh, just went higher level with it. So, um, yeah. But yeah, so I, I think that wraps that up. Um, thank you guys for joining us for our episode six review. Uh, make sure to subscribe to our whatever our streaming services for podcasts, or check out our YouTube channel. Um, we have a couple more videos up. All of our podcasts are going to be on YouTube now. We're going to be filming all of these. So make sure to check uh, check those out and subscribe. And uh, if you have any questions, DM us, message us, tweet at us. Uh, we've been getting a little more active on Twitter. So we're uh, looking for more questions and uh, we'd love to hear your feedback and your interactions. So uh, reach out to us. We'll be, uh, we'd love to feature, feature your questions on the uh, next podcast. So until then, see you later, Padawans. See ya.